Hello, JW Solar here. Uh, welcome to the Solax Cloud V6 series. This is all about the latest edition of Solax's app. Um, and today we're gonna to look at uh, the implementation of TOU. Um, some of you may have heard it and many users have been asking for me to do some sort of little tutorial on how to set it up because it isn't straightforward. So what is TOU? TOU stands for time of use and quite frankly, that doesn't make it any clearer. So what does it do? Um, TOU is a way of uh, scheduling uh, a program of your inverter essentially to follow throughout the day. Many users are restricted to two charge times and no discharge times. If you want discharge, you have to put it in a manual mode. Um, and that's normally setting in the usual remote settings. So Solaps have implemented TOU to allow many different battery charge times and many different discharge times. So it's as simple as that but it isn't. And those of you who've tried it will realize that the implementation of TOU is complex beyond belief for the average non-geeky user. It's just bamboozling. So it allows rules and it allows templates with all kinds of buttons and funny names and all kinds of weird places. Um, but essentially it's what we have for now. They are working on it. Uh, they realize it needs to be clearer. So this video is gonna take you through the existing implementation in the clearest possible way. All right, so let's take an example case scenario. Um, so you're on uh, Octopus Flux tariff, for example. Um, you have a cheap charge times between two in the morning and five in the morning. Um, you generally want to use self-use during the day. So it uses your battery to charge to uh, run your loads. And you want to discharge your battery to the grid to make use of all those good export uh, rates um, between four o'clock and seven o'clock in the afternoon. Um, and let's say you want to leave 30% in the battery to last you until two o'clock the next morning. Um, so just to keep it simple, we're gonna set that up on TLU. Okay, let's get started by opening the Solax Cloud app. So this is on Android. You can follow along on iPhone or anywhere else if you want to. Uh, now the TLU functionality in the app is well hidden. Um, it's in the device uh, section at the bottom and you're going to click the intelligent label here at the top and there is TLU. And uh, if you then click TOU, it goes into the uh, TOU um, setup section. We're not going to go into every detail of TOU. It's very complicated. We're just going to focus on the case scenario of Octopus Flux, and then you can um, experiment with it after that. So then we're going to click Create It and start by entering a TOU name. Now, a TOU name is the name of the whole time of use setup. Okay, so there are templates, there are rules, and there are TOUs, and this is the main TOU setup. So I'm just going to call that um, Octopus. Let me type it into my phone. Uh, Flux, for example. I might type that a few times. And in the description, you can put something. So I'm going to put charge um, 0 200 to 0 500 and discharge. Um, what are we? 1600 to 1900, like that. Now the uh, min sock just means uh, the minimum that the battery goes down to um, if it's uh, in self-use mode or if it's discharging. And uh, the most important bit is to choose which inverter you'd like TOU to operate on. So if you have more than one inverter on site, you can pick more than one off the list. I only have one home inverter, um, so you need to pick that and click next. Okay, time horizon. What the heck does that mean? All right, so each TOU can be specified for different times of the year. Um, you could have um, a summer plan. So, for example, you would uh, export between four and seven. Maybe you don't want to do that in winter, so you could set up a winter plan. So you can set up as many TOUs as you want for, for different times of the year. I'm going to leave it all year round. It's going to be all from January to December. All right, so the next thing to do is to add a rule. So to set up a rule, um, again, we're going to type in the name. So I'll just call it uh, Octopus Flux again. <clears throat> and then you can see the buttons are over the interface, which is not great. So I need to minimize the keyboard to see it. Um, and you can select between uh, running it on a weekly basis or at holiday times and whether you'd like to use templates or not. And I've no idea about the cited and unsighted terminology, but for this demonstration, I'm not going to use templates. I'm just going to enter it directly. So then I'm going to click OK. 
<clears throat> okay, so this is the main setup screen. We've got the main TOU, which is running from January to uh, December. And um, I've got my essentially my rule, which is essentially the program that the inverter is going to follow. Now, the big mistake everybody makes is to add another rule um, to, to do a charge and another rule for a discharge. And that is not the way TOU works. Okay. Um, Firstly, you want to choose which days you'd like the TOU to run. So, for example, if you don't want it to run on Saturday and Sunday, um, we can leave Saturday and Sunday out. So I'll, I'll just click the five days. You can click the seven days. Now, the important bit is then adding the times to the rule. And the times are added by clicking this little cross here. You click the little cross and you get to add a time period. And... I'm going to start with the, uh, let's do it on my phone because it'll be much quicker, I think. I'm going to start with the charge time period from 2 o'clock and the end time period. I think there's a better way of entering times than this. But um, So when I've set the times, I'd like the battery to charge between those two times. So I'm going to click Allow Charging down here. Um, and then you need to select whether you want to charge from the grid or not, which I do, and which percentage I'd like to charge to. So I'm going to say charge to 100%. You can set to charge at any time you like. All right, and then I want to click Save. When I click Save, you'll see that it's colored this purple line in pink between two o'clock and five o'clock, and it's added the TLU charging time, two to five here. Now again, don't click Add Rule to then add another time. We click the little cross and we add it to the same rule in TLU. This is the common mistake. All right, so this time I'm going to add the discharging time um, and that's going to be from four o'clock. Yeah, let's scroll through it all by 15 minute increments. And then end time to seven o'clock. There we go. Um, now I, I now don't want uh, charging, I want discharging. So if you scroll right up on the screen, uh, maximum discharge to the grid is at the bottom and you can just click on that. And uh, you can select the uh, power that you'd like to discharge to. I'm going to leave it 100% so that'll discharge at 7.5 kilowatts, but you can change that. And I'm going to set the minimum amount that I want to leave in the battery after the discharge at 7. Um, so that's going to be 30% in my case, and that will last till 2 o'clock the next morning when it starts to charge again. And when you've done that, again, click Save. And now on your timeline, you can see you've got the charge color, the red, which says Allow Charging, 2 to 5, and you've got the light blue, which is Allow Discharging. I'll just scroll up there for you. Um, maximum Discharge to the Grid. 4 o'clock to 7. Now anything in between those times it'll default to self-use because the purple here is default to self-use. So when you've finished your program, creating your program with those pluses, um, you can then click Save. Now this is where it gets a little bit weird because this is a, this is a summary screen of, uh, of what you've set up which is super but it looks like there's something else to do and there isn't. There isn't anything else to click, but you need to press enter. And um, if you use the back button because you've made a mistake, it all starts to go pear shaped. OK, so get it right first and then cl um, click enter. And then again, we can see that uh, this is the TOU. Um, it's selected. You can go back in and edit it from here if you want to um, delete it or just see the details. But you actually have to submit it to make it work. And here we are back at the main screen again. So at the moment, it's not sent to the inverter as a program and it won't follow it. So you can set these up as many as you like. Um, and then when you want to put a program to the inverter, you need to click the uh, slider toggle at the top. So I do the slider toggle at the top. It'll say that that's the inverter and you'll get this uh, um, buffering here and then you'll get a, a white tick and a turquoise circle hmm, shrug. Uh, which isn't particularly clear to say that it was successful. And if you click the cross, that is the TOU sent to the inverter. Um, there isn't really any way of checking on the inverter what the times are because it's a special program. So um, if I was to go back, for example, um, if I go to remote settings here and click work mode, 
you can see that the work mode is now enhanced TLU. This isn't a work mode that you can select manually. If you try to select it manually, there's no save button. It's grayed out, okay? It's something that the app does automatically when you sit, submit a TLU program. Um, so that's all there is to it. The inverter will now uh, charge between two and five in the morning and discharge between uh, four and seven in the evening, leaving 30% in the battery and the rest of the time it will be on self-use. We didn't look into templates. Um, templates are to create and save TOU rules um, for different purposes and times and times of year um, so that you can quickly change your TOUs, TOU settings um, without going through the setup each time. So they're really useful if you want to do presets, if you like, of, uh, of TOU rules. Um, another thing, the, um, the TOU settings override all other charge and discharge settings in remote settings. So you can't run both at the same time. The modes are different. So you either use TOU um, or you use the remote settings, but, but not both. Uh, a problem I have encountered, if, if by any chance it doesn't disable again when you wish to go back to use remote settings, um, you can manually set your inverter back to self-use mode at any time and, uh, and click save. Um, I think that's about it. Um, I hope TOU works for you. It's definitely an improvement on the uh, remote settings. Um, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.